Magcargo is an insanely underused Pokemon competitively, but there's a few reasons why this thing can actually pop off. Its amazing defensive bulk paired with Shell Smash for setup can give it some offensive power and speed, but even with the boost it's pretty slow. Luckily its ability Weak Armor is able to give you a plus 2 boost when hit with a physical attack, and there you've got a cocktail of destruction that no one will see coming. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, we have one goal and one goal only, and that is to show people that Mag Cargo demands respect. For real, this thing is actually a really fun Pokemon to use, and we've got ourselves a really fun game here. Hey, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k, and you can really help me out if you enjoy the content. But let's go ahead and get ourselves into the match and see how it goes. So, my opponent is going to lead off with the Murkrow. Now, the reason why people use Murkrow is because this thing gets access to both the Eviolite and the Prankster ability. So essentially, this thing's kind of a bulky Tailwind machine and it's honestly annoying. Anyway, I'm gonna go for the Stealth Rock knowing that they likely have the Taunt as a lead Murkrow. Uh, I just really don't have anything to lose for clicking it anyway, so I do go for it and we get Taunted. So Walnut's kind of pissed off, that means he can't really do anything and I have to basically get out of here as I'm gonna end up bringing in the Swalot. So our fat French dude Pierre can actually do a couple things here. Most of all, I wanna get the knockoff on the Murkrow. It's kind of just gonna be annoying as they actually end up going for a Torment, which is kind of interesting. It's going to make it so you can't use the same move two times in a row, which actually does kind of fuck with the Swalot. But I'm basically just going to go for the knockoff here. I want to get rid of this thing's Eviolite, make it less bulky, as obviously they probably don't know what to expect from Swalot, so they just go for the Taunt, uh, which does actually block me from using Destiny Bond. However, my main goal at this point is to kind of let this Murkrow chip me down to the range where I can actually get into my Custat Berry and then get some uh, potential for a Destiny Bond later. So they are going to go for the Tailwind. That's what you do expect from C and the Murkrow as I just end up going for the Poison Jab here. And we don't get the Poison, but we do get a whole bunch of damage once that fucking Eevee Light Rock is out of there. And of course now I can't go for the Poison Jab again. So I have to click Knock Off essentially at this point. And that is going to allow them to Nightshade. Now I'm actually fine with this thing kind of staying in on this matchup because it's burning turns of the Tailwind. And Pierre is over here getting closer to the point where I'm going to have my Custap activated. So they see that they, I do shake off the taunt and they just decide to go for it again. Which again is kind of annoying because that blocks me from doing my, my whole Destiny Bond situation with that Custap Berry. So down goes the Murkrow. It does die to one more Poison Jab. And I'm actually feeling pretty good about that. It's annoying Pokemon out of the way. And now they decide to go into the Toxtricity. So this thing behind a Tailwind is actually relatively threatening. Plus he's actually hanging on to a balloon he got from the parade. And now you can't hit him with a ground move. So... I'm instead, I have to go for the knockoff rather than the Earthquake here, as a Boom Burst from this is going to do a bunch of damage. Uh, but this is bulky ass Swalot who's kind of built to take special attacks, as I'm able to pop his balloon, basically rain on the dude's parade. As the Tailwind does go away, and that is pretty solid for me. So now considering I am going to be in range to activate my Custat Berry, I can essentially outspeed and go for a Destiny Bond. However, I feel like if I just conserve uh, the Swalot essentially at this health, I can always have basically just one in the chamber be able to outspeed with the Destiny Bond later if anything gets out of hand. So I decide to save it and I'm going to switch into the Fortress. Uh, so what Fortress does here is I come in, he's going to hit me with a Boom Burst which doesn't do a whole lot of damage but more importantly it's going to actually activate the red card on this thing and that's going to bring in essentially a random Pokemon on their team. I'm hoping for anything other than Talonflame as it actually is going to end up dragging in a different bird, uh, much more American, the Braviary. So this actually puts me in a spot where I essentially I wanted to get Fortress in to be able to set up some hazards. I'm feeling like a potential sweep is brewing on my end, both with the Arbok, potentially with the Mad Cargo, so I want to get some hazards up knowing that they have a ton of flying type Pokemon over here. The Stealth Rock is going to be super nice to grab uh, some solid chip and make it a little bit easier for the sweepers in the back, as they actually just are going to pivot right into the Talonflame. So Talonflame's an interesting matchup here, of course, this thing is going to threaten me with the Flare Blitz. Uh, but I just decided to stay in here. I figure I kind of got my rocks up and did what I needed to do as they're actually going to overpredict and go for the Brave Bird, thinking I was likely going to switch out there, but I'm just going to instead stay over here, play with my spiky Legos and just throw them uh, on their side of the field. So I get spikes up. I also have the Stealth Rock and I'm feeling pretty good at this moment in time because Talonflame is actually the perfect Pokemon uh, to be able to set up one of my dudes. So this thing does end up finishing me off with the Flare Blitz, which is perfect. And now the door is open for the absolute legend. Listen, nobody puts any respect on Mag Cargo's name. He's a snail and he's slow as shit, but me and my little spicy S Cargo buddy have a plan. And that is essentially to take advantage of Mag Cargo's ability, pair that with Shell Smash. And looking at the remainder of their team, there's a pretty good chance that uh, Mag Cargo does some stuff that this thing basically has never done before. So. I bring in the Cargo, who is looking absolutely fire in this game, by the way. And I'm going to end up going for the Shell Smash, as they actually go for the Roost. So, 
ordinarily mag cargo doesn't have a whole lot uh, to hit the talon flame unless you're carrying something like power gem or something like that but i do have a different answer so i go for the shell smash that is going to go ahead and give me a nice little double boost in speed and special attack and I also am actually carrying the White Herb to negate the defense drops. Because Sheldon does need his defense, and you're going to see why. Essentially, why we like this matchup so much against the Talonflame is it kind of forces them to hit me with a physical attack. And when you do that, you break my dude's shell even further. The shell may be an absolute fucking shambles at this point, but you're going to see it's about to get much worse. So they go for the Brave Bird here. It does do a decent chunk, but it is going to activate my weak armor ability that is going to go ahead and raise my speed sharply once again. And... I'm feeling like this thing isn't actually not that large of a threat, so I go for another Shell Smash. And now, this is truly the most scary Pokemon on this side of the Mississippi, and it just so happens to be pretty much the least expected thing. So, uh, with the defense drop, we do know that a Brave Bird actually is going to do a whole lot of damage. But, important for us is we actually have so much offensive power at this point that I can go ahead and commit that Terra Water and hit him with a Terra Water Terra Blast. And this Talon Flame absolutely stands no chance in hell. So... Putting that fountain on my dude's head is going to give me a nice little defensive type against the other Pokemon, but most importantly, I'm literally faster than everything at this point. I have, there's probably never been a faster Mag Cargo. I'm actually running max speed on this thing, plus the shell smashes, plus the weak armor. You can actually get this thing going in a pretty crazy way. So the Terra Blast does obviously take care of the Talon Flame, and that is one fast bird out of the way. I am a straight up Turbo Racer Snail at this point, and uh, this <laughs> opponent probably has no idea what the hell just hit him. So they end up going into the Toxicity. This thing does get hit by the spikes, and obviously it does not have nearly enough health to be able to stand a chance against the absolute goat and threat that is Mag Cargo. I do go for the Earth Power, just to flex on him real quick, say, hey, that balloon you had earlier would have been nice here, even though pretty much anything I click there does take care of it. As obviously, I'm literally like plus six speed and speedy as hell out here. I'm talking Mag Cargo on wheels. My cargo, fast as hell. Anyway. Uh, they end up going into the Braviary. Now, this is a Pokemon that is going to be showing some relative bulk, but I just go for the Flamethrower with that stab that you still retain from even going from the Terra. Uh, it's actually my highest damage output, but the Flamethrower does take care of the Braviary, and these birds are getting absolutely roasted. I know what we're having for dinner tonight, and it's going to be birds with the side of uh, Lorantis, apparently. This thing comes in with a striped pants looking groovy as shit, but... Uh, of course, you know, this thing's slow naturally anyway, so I do outspeed, the flamethrower takes care of the Lorantis, and this is how you find yourself a situation in a game where Mag Cargo can actually be the most clutch Pokemon on the field, which is kind of crazy. Now, here's the funniest part, they go into Kilowattril. I'm talking about, like, the fa one of the fastest Gen 9 Pokemon. This thing comes in here flying high as hell, but Mag Cargo is, in fact, still faster, and that is exactly why we needed to get the two Shell Smashes, because... Going for Terra Water is a little bit risky when they have a fast electric type, but sometimes the snail will just outspeed and get you. So that is going to be the remainder of the match. I know that was a relatively quick one and kind of just, I had, I had to do it to him. Listen, Mag Cargo doesn't get his, his time in the spotlight often, and uh, I had to feature the guy. So let me know what you guys thought. If you enjoyed, leave a like on the video, of course. I do appreciate all the support, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.